Before we begin, how do I address you? You can call me love. You can call me love. You can call me love. Sean Diddy Combs is in big trouble, and there are lots of lawsuits piling up against him. In this video, we're going to break down some of those lawsuits and where they stand right now. So, what's the deal with Diddy? The feds are saying he ran a criminal gang, using his power and wealth to force people to do some pretty bad things, including hosting wild parties and involving... Well, let's just say things got really messy. Since 2008, he's been abusing his influence, getting people to do what he wanted through bribery, violence, and kidnapping. Now, these lawsuits are like puzzle pieces, putting clues together that could even help the government in their criminal case against him. The not-so-funny part of this is that these lawsuits happened before the government said his crime started. Now, the big question is, will these accusers take the stand? Before we get into the current lawsuits, let's talk about the one that started all of this drama. On November 16th, 2023, Cassandra Ventura, a.k.a. Cassie, filed a lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs, where she accused him of physical and emotional abuse, and even forcing her into some seriously weird situations. She also mentioned that he blew up Kid Cootie's car because she had started dating him. Cassie said Diddy set her up in a freaky party with sex workers just so he could watch. Now, this lawsuit settled just one day after it was filed, and while the details stayed secret, both parties said they resolved it amicably. But is that the truth? Next, we see Liza Gardner jump in, accusing Diddy of assaulting her back in 1990 when she was only 16. She says he invited her to a party, Things got out of hand, and it led to some terrible stuff involving sexual assault. These lawsuits came just before a special law window closed, allowing victims to finally speak out years later. Gardner thought she finally had her case figured out when she sued someone in New York, but then her case got dismissed, and she refiled it in New Jersey. Her lawyer shared that new information from a former record label employee and a Bad Boy Records executive brought clarity to the claims. There was confusion about where the assault happened and Gardner claimed she was taken by car from New York to an apartment in New Jersey. So, as the judge in New Jersey considered her case, Gardner also thought of amending the complaint and possibly moving it to state court. Meanwhile, there was Joy Dickerson Neal, who in 1991 went to dinner with Sean Diddy, who she claimed was a mutual friend. She even appeared in a music video with him. But that night took a sour turn for her when something terrible happened, and Diddy allegedly videotaped it. When Dickerson later found out, she learned from a friend that everyone had seen the tape. It was so distressing that it led to her being hospitalized for depression. Dickerson tried to press charges, but no one would support her because they were scared of Diddy. She even ran into him later, but he insisted he hadn't done anything wrong. With frustration, she decided to sue him for assault and emotional distress under the Adult Survivors Act, making her case just as complex as Gardner's. There's another big lawsuit that has got a lot of publicity. This one happened in February 2024, when a former music producer named Rodney Lilrod Jones filed a big lawsuit against Diddy in a New York court. He accuses Diddy of terrible things like assault, harassment, and even sex trafficking. Jones claimed that Diddy and others were part of a secret criminal group that did shady stuff like forcing people to transport drugs and even using kids to make music without paying them properly. Jones shared another story about Diddy groping him without asking and showing him a video of another producer doing something strange to help him feel better about being gay. He said there were hidden cameras in Diddy's house, recording everyone at his parties, and that Diddy had some serious dirt on celebrities. The most shocking part was when Jones witnessed a shooting at a recording studio and claimed Diddy had a party with underage girls and sex workers, showing a video of Diddy getting a little too friendly with a young girl. 
Now Jones is fighting back against Diddy's team, saying they can't just throw out his case. He promised to share the names of people involved in the bad stuff and even the travel agents who often helped Diddy fly around with drugs and guns. Just when you think it can't get crazier, Diddy's lawyer asked for more time to respond. There are more stories involving Diddy and some women standing up for themselves. First up is Grace Omari, who was excited to work on Sean's fancy yacht in St. Martin back in December 2022. She thought it would be a fun family trip, but instead of relaxing, Grace was said to have found herself in a party filled with celebrities and lots of partying. She claimed that the drinks were so strong, women would sip and suddenly drop unconscious. One night, Grace said that Diddy's son, Christian, started bothering her. He followed her around and when she tried to escape to do her job, he blocked her in a room and was very inappropriate with her. He tried to force her to perform oral sex on him. Grace managed to push him off until someone else walked in. She reported it to the yacht captain the next day, but instead of helping her, he got mad and eventually fired her. There's also another woman named Crystal McKinney. She loved modeling and was excited to have gotten an invite to a fancy dinner where she'd meet Sean Diddy. But at dinner, Diddy, who she had great respect for, kept filling her drinks and making creepy sexual comments. Later, she says things got worse when she met him at his studio, where she claims he sexually assaulted her. She even kept her clothes from that night as proof. Next is April Lampros, who met Diddy back in 1994. She was a college student with dreams of fashion fame. Sean seemed like a really cool guy, showering her with gifts and promises. But before she knew it, he became aggressive, and she claimed he raped her. There's also a claim that Diddy recorded videos of them without her knowing and showed it off to people. Another guy named Derek Lee Cardello Smith, who was in prison, decided to sue Diddy too. He said Diddy drugged him and did awful things to him back in 1997 at a party. Derek wrote in his own words that he was just trying to enjoy a drink when Diddy handed him a different one that made him feel dizzy. When he woke up, Diddy told him he had assaulted him. Derek said he couldn't even talk about it until he got therapy in prison. So, Derek filed a $100 million lawsuit. Although Diddy's team did say they had no idea about the lawsuit, but Derek still kept fighting back. In a surprising move, a judge agreed with Derek and said Diddy couldn't sell his house for 90 days. But it didn't end there. Just when it seemed like Derek might win, Diddy's team claimed the lawsuit was just silly. They even called it frivolous and said Derek made it all up. Diddy also insisted he never even met Derek. Meanwhile, another artist named Dawn Richard, who used to work with Diddy, jumped into the mix. She said she saw Diddy do some really mean stuff to another woman named Cassandra. She recounts one example when she witnessed him push Cassandra against a wall, choking her, after which he threw hot eggs at her. Dawn was not just there to spill tea. She also claimed Diddy took her money and made her work in terrible conditions. She said he wouldn't even let her sleep properly or eat enough food. With all these serious claims, she accused him of things like assault and human trafficking. And the most recent one was when a woman named Talia Graves took a big step on September 24, 2024. She sued Diddy in a New York court. But this wasn't just any regular lawsuit. She claimed that back in 2001, when she was 25, she was lured to a recording studio. Talia said that while she was there, she might have been drugged and then attacked by Diddy and his bodyguard, Joseph Sherman. Can you imagine finding out that someone recorded a terrible moment like that? Talia was shocked when she learned that they had made a video of it 22 years ago and showed it to others. Then, just a few days later, on September 27th, another woman, let's call her Jane Doe, stepped forward with her own story. She claimed she met Diddy in 2020 while traveling. Jane said that he did terrible things to her, and she even thought he might have secretly recorded their encounter. 
She said this went on for four years until the feds raided his homes. Jane also said Diddy's friend, Young Miami, pressured her into having an abortion, and sadly she suffered a miscarriage. It's a lot to take in. Now, a Texas lawyer named Tony Busby plans to file lawsuits for 120 people who claim they were abused by Diddy. Some of these cases involve minors. He said he would first sue companies that let this happen and then go after big celebrities who were involved. So, is the drama over? Not even close.